All right, so in this tutorial, we're gonna be tackling this procedural material. If you wanna download this project file and see what I did, if you missed something or anything like that, you can download it on Gumroad for $1. I'm gonna put that in the description if you wanna go grab that. So let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we're gonna be using Eevee just to preview this, but this material works in Cycles and Eevee. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make an Icosphere. I'm gonna make it just like that, shade smooth. All right, so let's go over to the shading tab here in Blender 2.8. I'm gonna hit Z and look dev. All right, so here is our sphere. Let's go ahead and click new on our material and let's bring this right over here. And let's make a mix shader because we are gonna add an emission shader. So let's type that in, E-M, emission. And we'll bring that guy right down here and plug it into our mix shader right there. And let's give it a strength of 30 and let's make it kind of an orangey red. So now we have a sunlight. These two are actually mixing right here. so just like that, but we don't want it to do that. We want to tell it where to place things and things like that. So first thing we're going to add is a color ramp and we're going to use this color ramp to sort of crunch the things that are going to be behind it. So now let's add a Voronoi texture. So we're going to Voronoi texture, plug that here right into the color ramp and you can't see anything happening. We need to add the color ramp into the factor here on our mix shader. So now you can kind of see it happening. Let's go ahead and bump this up to a size of seven. Let's change down here from closest here to crackle. And now you can start seeing it happening, but these lines are way too straight and they don't look like rocks. They just like look like something else. So how are we gonna give it some more detail and things like that? Well, let's go ahead and add a texture coordinate. So, and let's put the object coordinate right here to the vector. So that didn't really do much. That just sort of, if the reason why we're using the object coordinate so that when we add this material to other objects, it'll take that and sort of evenly distribute it for all the objects with that object data. But first here in the base color, let's just bring it down kind of like that and make it a little bit more rough. We're not gonna be making metallic because rocks aren't metallic. So now we need to make these lines kind of bumpy and edgy. So let's add a noise texture. But when we add the noise texture, it goes crazy. Now, doesn't look like rocks at all. So we need to tell it to just do it a little bit. So let's add a mix RGB, put that right here. And here on the object coordinate, we're gonna plug that right here into color two. And so if you've seen my other shading videos, you know what's happening here. If you bring the factor all the way here, you're only seeing the noise texture affected. And if you bring the factor over here, you're only seeing this Voronoi texture affected. So let's bring it over just a little bit so you can see it affected. And let's bring the detail all the way up here in our noise texture. So now we have rocks. And if we bring up the, de the size here on the noise texture, now we have these really cool rocks, but it's super flat. We want it to make it look like there's some bump going on. So right here, we're gonna add a bump node. We'll click that, add it to the bump node right here on the normal. And we'll plug this noise, and we'll plug our Voronoi texture right here to the height. Let's switch to cycles just so that we can see how it looks in cycles. Render it, boom. Now you can see the bumping going on here in our rocks and it looks like a really cool kind of a lava shader. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do here is go back to the shading, click rendered. And so now we have this, just say we don't want it to be like this completely. So there's just barely a crack. So we can just do this, but now it's too harsh we want it to be more of a smooth fade. So let's bring it back and change it to B spline. And now it's gonna be a much smoother fade. So now we have these smooth rocks and this is how you really get that glowy, really hot rock material look with this. And there you go, it's just simple as that. Again, if you can't figure out what I did, if, if you missed something or just stuck in a spot, you can go ahead and download that, that file there on Gumroad. And thanks for watching.